Hello again, guys. It's Stephen Daniels with DUI New Consultants. I'm here today to uh, give you some more evidence of manipulation and testing results uh, to back up my opinion that the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, the alcohol testing program, is in some serious trouble. Uh, there's no oversight on this, um, and that oversight creates areas of manipulation for not only the defense but the, uh, the state. So you've got innocent people uh, getting convicted, and now you've also got uh, potentially uh, impaired people um, through these loopholes that have to at least intentionally design uh, being put back on the street. Um, one of the things that I'm concerned about is that your state legislators have given the FDLE uh, alcohol testing program the authority to propagate their own rules. And in those rules, they constructed them to say that if the machines fail one time in an HC or department inspection testing sequence, uh, they're allowed to retest that whole sequence and keep the machine online as long as uh, it passes the second time and the HC or department inspector puts down why the machine failed, what they did correct it. Uh, therein lies the problem. Um, there's no transparency to this. Um, there's no way to confirm that these excuses are, are actually valid or if they're bogus. Um, one of the things as we stumbled onto this is I did an investigation on the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. And uh, after getting thousands of hours of public records request videos uh, and reviewing these videos, I not only um, was able to determine that they were, in fact, turning machines off and deleting and failing test results, I also determined that they were using bogus excuses to keep a failing machine online. Um, so that's why I'm calling for nationwide mandatory videotaping and uh, of all subject breath tests, all age inspection, all department inspections. Uh, and the reason for that is you can have the best machine in the world, uh, but if you don't have integrity from the people conducting the tests or transparency to confirm that the excuses they're using that allow them to retest, well that basically strips away any scientific foundation uh, for the results from that test. And speaking of the scientific foundation and accuracy and reliability and the whole ball of wax, let's talk about FDLE's mission statement. Here's their mission statement that I basically cut and pasted into a Word document. And it's on, it's on their website, so you can go there and read it. But I'm just going to hold it here, so if you want to still shot your camera, your video. Let me read it to you. To enhance uh, the alcohol testing program mission statement, to enhance public safety by ensuring, ensuring folks, the accuracy and scientific reliability of evidentiary blood and breath alcohol tests, facilitating the enforcement of implied consent laws and administrative rules, and promoting promoting the qualifications and professionalism of persons responsible for blood and breath alcohol analysis in the state of Florida. Now, after I get done showing you this evidence, I want you to decide if they're really living up to their mission statement. Let me go on to read. This is authorized by chapters 316, 322, 330, uh, 327 FS, and chapter 11D-8 uh, Florida Administrative Code. So, guys, the problems that we have with, our, with the alcohol testing program, you need to thank your state legislators for this. Because they're the ones that allowed FDLE to propagate these rules that are ripe for manipulation uh, of test results. Um, so I, I've got a problem with that. I've also got a problem with not only FDLE making their own rules, I've got a problem with them keeping their own documents. Um, because it's kind of funny when I show these documents. When, when I get these documents, or like if I get a client and we pull documents off the website right before we go to trial, there's the web, there's documents missing. And I'll, I'll put up other videos to show you what I'm talking about that. Um, the uh, mission statement goes on to say, the alcohol testing program ha has exclusive responsibility for, one, the regulation, operation, inspection, of, and registration of breath test instruments. So, one, they don't do this, as I'm going to show you. Two, the regulation of individuals who operate and inspect evidentiary breath test instruments. I'm going to show you that on this. On this, I have evidence that that's not happening. And three, regulation of blood analysis who conduct uh, blood alcohol testing. Well, I'm not an expert in blood testing. I'm only an expert on the intoxilizer, expert uh, witness consultant on the intoxilizer 8000. So, um, again, uh, I'm going to show you evidence from another department inspector. Um, her name is Maggie Gettings, and the HC inspector that we're going to be talking about today is James C. Smith for the Lynn Heaven Police Department. So, Mr. Smith, um, the Lynn Heaven Police Department's intoxilizer goes out for repair, and Florida Department of Law Enforcement loans in one of theirs. He goes to conduct a test. He goes to conduct this test. There's his name. Uh, there's the intoxilizer, 80-000206. Uh, it's registered to Florida Department of Law Enforcement. The HC inspector is James Smith. He uses four simulators. The date of this test is 8-31-2006. The test ends at 15-07. Does it comply? No. And as you see over here, he has some problems on the 05, or excuse me, the .20. The first test that he does is a .155. He gets the retest, and it's still not within tolerance. The next test is the 162. Guys, on a .20, it's a lot of margin of error. 
And as long as it reads it between a 0 0.190 and a 0.210, it's okay for the evidence sample collection. If it reads it outside that range, the machine will give you a warning flag, control outside of tolerance, you want to retest. Yes, you got to put the excuse in and why it failed. So now back to that. So he's still got a problem here. He got a problem on the third analysis. And when you see small caps like this, guys, that's the computer, that's automatic computer generated. That's intoxilizer types that in. He's also got a radio frequency interference. Guys, that could affect your uh, your it could give you a elevated BRAC result, mm -hmm. breath alcohol concentration result, or one of the analysis could be higher. And then this, when you see all caps, <coughs> that's the a, the HC inspector, a department inspector typing their their excuse, their excuse in. Um, and he just typed in, uh, he didn't put a reason, he just typed in his control outside of town. So he said what was wrong, but he didn't put, put down what he did to correct it. So now that test completed at uh, 1505.46. So now what's he do? He conducts another test. Now here's the test again. Here's his name again. There's this machine. And this one uh, is on the same day. And, and it's four hours later, he uses four simulators. Does it comply? No. But now when you want to look, his first analysis is uh, 04. <coughs> But with the first one here, up here, it's an 038. That's outside of range. The 05 needs between 0.045 and an 055. So the first, the 05 fails. Now he moves to the next simulator. The next simulator fails, the 08. It needs to be between 075 and 085. So it fails. The first one's at 070. Then he goes to the 20, and it fails. Look, it's really down there. It's supposed to be between a 0.190 and a 0.210. So the first analysis is a 0.106. So now if you go down, he, has, he fails to type in anything. It's, this is all computer generated. He doesn't type anything. If you notice, it's still got the, IR, the radio frequency interference. So either somebody had a cell phone in that area, a, radio, a police radio or something. So now what's he do? He waits a couple days. He comes back on 9-2. And on 9-2, there he is again. Same machine. Now he's got five simulators. This time, 9-2, uh, he conducts the first test at 9-43. Look, the machine says it complies, but do you notice anything missing over here? He didn't run any tests. What happened? If you notice down here, it says AFMA. That means alcohol-free mouth alcohol. He did the mouth alcohol test, and the range exceeded. And, guys, the range on that is up to a .60. Uh, if you go to my uh, channel, you can see where I've done some mouth alcohol tests that show you that the uh, Intoxilizer 8000 has some serious problems in differentiating the difference between true mouth alcohol and breath alcohol. I blow zeros. And then to show you, I have no mouth alcohol, no breath alcohol, and then I swish my mouth with vodka. There's one on there where I blew a 547. At that level, I'd be dead. I just did a recent one where I blew a 472, uh, and it was pure mouth alcohol. So that's got to scare the hell out of you. That's why you should drink and drive. These machines are so, so bad. I mean, they're not accurate, guys. And then when you got people that manipulate testing results, so your machines are bad to begin with, and then you got... The, the inspectors not being truthful and honest and putting down bogus excuses. You got a serious problem with breath testing in Florida. Now we're going to move on. Remember, this was his first test. He, he came back a couple days later and he conducted his first test. Now he comes back just a little bit later, a couple minutes later. There he is again, same machine on 9 2. Uh, he completes this one at 9.47, five simulators. It doesn't comply. And what's he have over here? Now we've got a serious problem on the alcohol-free simulator test, guys, which is nothing more than uh, 500 milliliters of distilled water. It's picking up an interferon. I mean, how is it picking up an interferon on pure water? And so now he moves to the 2.0 simulator, and he's still got a problem. Look at the first test is a 1.62. Uh, and then he doesn't do the other ones. It's a 1.78. He retests. And it's barely in range here, but <clears throat> so now you go down to the the uh, computer generated. So now he's got an interference detect on the uh, zeros, and control outside of tolerance, control outside of tolerance. So he doesn't type in uh, anything. He doesn't type any reasons or what he did to correct it. So that's the second test. He goes on to a third test, and again, now this one, this one's just a little bit. This is like 45 minutes later. There's the intoxilizer again. There's his name. He's still in five simulators. This one finishes at 10.32. Does it comply? No. But now look what happens over here. Now he's still having problems. The alcohol-free one passed, but now he's still having problems with the, uh, the 05. It registers an 031. So he goes to retest it, and the retest is still out of range. So he doesn't go any farther than that. And if you notice down here, he, still, he doesn't put any excuses in uh, why it failed or what he did to correct. So now he goes to lunch. Uh, you got his frustration is going through the roof right now, probably. So he's got to take a break. He's got to get out of there, get away from the machine. He goes, he has lunch. He comes back. And now if you want to look, here he is again. He's uh, a couple hours later. There he is again, five simulators. 
Does it comply? No. Now look, he's still having problems with the 05 simulator. It's an 032. He goes retest and he's still got problems. So now, what does he put down? He does, he doesn't put anything down. This is all computer generated because uh, when it's small caps, that's the computer. When it's all caps, uh, that's the uh, H inspector doing it. So now he's done four tests, guys. And remember, after failed the second time, what's he supposed to do? He calls his department inspector and he gets guidance. So they should probably say, hey, do this, do that. It's probably O-ring. It's probably a simulator. It's probably the solution. It's probably the temperature of the solution. A loose connection. It's, it's, it's everything but the intoxilizer. It's never the intoxilizer. So that's why we need videos hey, to confirm this stuff. So now he conducts his fifth test of the day. As you can see, there he is again. There's his fifth test. He finishes it at 15.15. He's still got five simulators, guys. And does it comply? No. But now if you look, he's still having problems with the 05. So not only does he have problems with the 05, he has problems with the uh, the uh, 08. The first one's at 068. Then he moves to the 2, and he's still got problems with the 2. So this whole thing, he's got problems. It keeps on getting worse for this guy. So now look at his excuse that he puts. This is the gem you've been waiting for. Look who he puts. This machine sucks. Guys, when I when I saw that, I about fell out of my chair. Naturally, I sent it out to all my attorney friends and all the, all my business associates, and some of them actually have this hanging in the office. So when I exposed this back in late 2007, like I say, it went around wildfire. So what happened then? You know, the upper level management got on the phone, called Maggie Gettings, and said, "Get over there, take care of this, do some damage control." So, so what's Maggie Gettings do? She goes over there and she spends a couple days over there. You know they were crafting what, how could they overcome this? Here's her department field note on that. And if you notice, over here, that's the alcohol program manager's signature. There's the machine. It's Lynn Haven Police Department. There's what Maggie Gettings had to say. There's the date. There's a, there's a date over here. There's her signature. And then over here is the date. So let me read what this says to you. It says, spoke with Chief Messer and Jim Smith about regarding uh, regarding comments made on H inspection report dated 9-2-2006. A memo explaining uh, the comment was compiled to be placed into the instrument file. Now, the, uh, the ironic thing is, look at this. She was there from the 7th to the 9th. Three days to come up with this fraudulent excuse. Now, why would I say it's fraudulent? Well, here, here's the whole, here's what you have to realize. This is the actual memo from the Lynn Heaven Police Department. It's dated on the 11th when FDLA received it. It's from, it's to Maggie Gettings. It's from Sergeant James Smith. It's dated January 9th, 08. It's about the agency inspection on 9206. And then here's what it says. I'll hold it there for a second so you can see it. Maybe you do a still shot on your video. And let me read it to you because I only got about two minutes left. It says, the remarks of this section... The mark, the remarks section of this report, when submitted electronically, stated that the machine sucks, and in parentheses, air through a bad thermometer, uh, air through a bad simulator thermometer seal, and does not refer to the above ref reference intoxilizer. This unit was on loan to our department while the intoxilizer 8000 was in for repairs. Why our intoxilizer 8000 was in for repairs? The instrument was not co in compliance, and the entirety of the remarks of this field was not fully transmitted. Oh my God! If that's not a BS excuse, he really believes us, and I can't believe Maggie Gettings let him put that down. He really believe, wants us to believe that he actually typed in "this machine sucks air" and then in parentheses, uh, "air through a bad simulator thermometer seal." So what? He typed it in, and when he hit transmit to the mother computer. That part magically got erased or didn't get transmitted? Let me finish this. The simulator in question was removed from service. There's the key, guys, to the bogus excuse. The simulator was removed from service pending repairs to the thermometer seal, and a new simulator was repurchased. The Lynn Haven Police Department's instrument 80-000840 has since been placed back into service, and I assure you that I have the utmost confidence in the Intoxilizer 8000. Please feel free to call me if you have any further questions or problems regarding this H inspection report. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, the problem is, this guy's a law enforcement officer. Do you notice any signature there where he stated he wrote this? More likely, he didn't He didn't write this this thing either. Um, you'd have to question that. And here's the big thing. Maggie Gettings really wants us to believe that she can go there. Uh, it happened on 9-2, and she goes there, what, 15 months later, and she gets the chief. The chief tells this guy to write this report. She expects us to believe it. Here's the other bogus excuse. Remember what it said right here, guys. Right here. The simulator in question. Well, let me show you. The simulator in question. The simulator in question. There was five simulators. Mr. Smith, were, were three or all five of the simulator seals bad on the thermometer? So you can see this is a bogus excuse. Once again, this is Stephen Daniels with DOI New Consultants. Check back for more videos. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did.